Well, hello, you guys, and welcome to We're Pod in This Together. It's the podcast where we guide you through our favorite, no, wait, shucks, I'm not good at this intro, where we guide you through your favorite or not so favorite Disney Channel original movies, or in this case, Christmas movies. I'm Brandon. I'm Indoni. I'm Sammy. Grab your feather dusters. I can't read today. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to do it? Please do. Grab your feather dusters and trade them all for some tiaras. What? Today we're watching Crown for Christmas. Sammy, you have to read. Sammy, it. you want to cover the summary because Brandon can't read today. <laughs> After getting fired from her, uh, I'm starting over. <laughs> you guys drank too much eggnog. That's it. After getting fired from her job as a maid at a ritzy New York City hotel, Allie reluctantly accepts a temporary gig as the governess to a young girl who is part of a powerful family in Europe that lives in a castle. Um, Powerful family is an understatement. Yeah, they don't even have that many muscles. That makes it sound like they're like the mafia. Yeah. Yikes. Well, okay. So this is a Hallmark (laughs) original Christmas movie. Um, I don't normally watch Hallmark movies, but I thought it would be fun to do this one because this is rated basically the best Hallmark Christmas movie. When I Google it, it's got like a 97% rating. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. I've watched a bunch of shitty Christmas rom-coms and this is up there in quality. Oh, heck yeah. Well, we can all aspire to be a maid who gets married to a rich king. Wait, fuck. I gave away the ending. Shoot. And don't he- Ruined Christmas. I never would have seen this mo- this ending coming ever no, in a million. The years. name does not suggest anything. So I think the joy of these Hallmark movies is that you know the ending, even if you've never seen the movie. Well, yeah, I'd agree I mean, with it's that. Always like the person gets the one that they're in love with or has a crush on, and yeah. it snows. I guess right. Like we know, no one's gonna like get the shaft at the end. I mean, you huh? probably got the royal shaft, right? all right i don't know anyone's name in this movie i don't either i don't think they say them enough except for uh, theodora yeah Yeah. theodora they say a lot i swear they didn't say the main girl's name for at least half an hour i was taking notes and i kept having to write like our our hero or this girl yeah because they they kept saying oh hi sister because we had to know that they were brother and sister so the first thing we get is Mm -hmm. oh good morning sister and i cannot think of a time where i've woken up and said like good morning brother good morning sister might have been like facetious and been like dear sweet brother of mine or something like that but never like good you could be in a hallmark movie so dear (laughs) sweet sister of his wakes up and we learn that her and her dear sweet brother of hers are broke living in New York, and she's an artist. And you're forgetting a sibling. There's a sister, too. In fact, I think we see the sister far more than we see the brother. Well, she's got more lines than him, at least. I was. Does the brother also work at the hotel? He might be. He might just be a busboy. Or a butt. What do they call those? A butt? A bellhop. A bellhop. <laughs> a butt? A butt. <laughs> He's a butt. So we don't know what the brother does other than I think he's a student, but we do know that the two dear sweet sisters are maids at a very ritzy hotel. Yes. And all their bills are overdue and they're going to try and hustle real hard to make up the money with tips and stuff. They're going to make it through and you know why? Because they're Evans. They're Evans. That was lame and stupid. It was very stupid. But also if you're going to repeat that line a thousand times, I feel like... the writer should have been like, you know what, Evans is is really hard to say. Let's pick a different last name. <laughs> well, yeah, no that reminds me of the Adams family when they're in the motel after they got kicked out of their house. They're like, we're Adamses. So they, the sisters, right? They're in the hotel. The boss lady says, "You guys are going up to the VIP floor. Woo party! No, just kidding. They don't get a party. They have to clean up a party. They have to clean up. So she goes into." What we now know is the king's suite. The butler was like, oh, you guys had a real party last night. And it was like one teacup left out. Yeah. And the champagne flutes were still nicely stacked. Like if it was a crazy party, they would have been like knocked over. And it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a mess. But even the idea of him having a wild party, which he kind of says like, yeah, we had quite a night. That doesn't really fit his character at all. No. He's a prince. No, what is he, a king? He's a king. Yeah. To a a very small country. It's called Windsor. 
Winsure. And everyone's British, apparently. Well, they're Winsurian. Oh. And I'm pretty Winsure about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so I'm leaving bad. the podcast. All right. Yeah. So the king of Winsure leaves his room a mess. He has to go back to Winsure the next day. But the butler's like, actually, your daughter's nanny quit because she couldn't handle the job. So you need to find somebody really quick. I didn't understand why they needed a New York nanny. Like, were they going to bring the daughter to they New They didn't York? need a New York one. They were just in New York for um, business reasons. You know, King. I think he just said, maybe I'll find one here. It doesn't really make that much sense. Whatever. No. That's not important. No. The... What is important is that the butler just says, this maid right here, she sees him about, right? Like, and follows her home. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, pretty much. So the king bumps into this maid. And it's an like adorable love love connection immediately. So cute. If anybody bumped into me and then immediately gave me chocolates, I would probably love them too. Yeah. And a whole bunch of hotel soaps. Who doesn't love taking home a whole bunch of hotel soaps? I don't love hotel soaps. They usually make my skin very dry. Actually, that's pretty true. They're pretty intolerable. Yeah, but this is a swank hotel, so maybe they've got lush products in all the bedroom bath Ooh. Ooh, do you think this place is that fancy that they have lush bath bombs i mean that'd be pretty sweet their soap is really nice does not dry my skin yeah i love l- i will use any lush product any day of the week while we're at it this episode is sponsored by lush cosmetics oh my god i wish, I wish. i'm gonna email them <laughs> i would take so much free lush shit please I tried this one. It wasn't uh, the conditioner bars, but it was like the, um, I don't know what you call it, but you'd leave it in your hair for like half an hour and then you wash it out. My hair had never been so soft. I was literally like just laying in bed, petting my hair all night. It was amazing. I bet your dog was real jealous of your hair. Probably. So go grab your Lush shit today. And tell them we sent you. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Lush.com, enter promo code PODDEN. And, and you happen. won't get anything. <laughs> oh, man. They'll be like, the fuck is this? We're going to charge you an extra 10%. <laughs> <laughs> just don't give it away for free in a hotel or you will get fired. Just like Allie. She got fired because her sister left to go on an audition. Yes. Broadway, an audition. I guess. She said something about the chorus. Yeah. So she went for an audition and... Allie was like, you go, I will take care of the rest of this floor by myself. And because of that, she was running a teeny bit late and some fancy bitch was down in the lobby waiting on the hotel room to be ready. And she was not done yet because of the rager that she had to clean up after. I want to throw a tea party rager one day. Ooh, that sounds like fun. What would be there? Well, I would have to get like very fine china. A lot of it. There would be like three kinds of tea. I know, crazy, right? And none of them would be caffeine free. And you'd use sugar cubes instead of Splenda packets. Oh yeah, and well, and just like gallons and gallons of agave because I like that better than sugar. Oh. And there would be tea sandwiches, but we would use fucking apricot jam just to really throw <sighs> caution to the wind holy shit that's pretty wild and there would be bees there fresh bees that you could squeeze honey out of right into your milk the bees like an udder <laughs> yeah right <laughs> oh my gosh and only nut milk there would be no actual dairy milk what about potato milk absolutely potato milk peanut milk as well what about beef milk uh <laughs> beef milk is acceptable <laughs> that's dairy milk you just said no i tricked no, you no no it's beef milk. This is different. Oh, I didn't know. Anyway, <laughs> my favorite thing about wild tea parties is when we get the maids fired from their jobs and then give yes. them $5,000. Oh, yeah, because the butler stocks are bad. Well, because she finds the watch who somehow the king forgets his father's watch, which seems pretty important. Like, you know. I think it was subconscious because we learned throughout this movie that he didn't care much for his father. And so he was probably just like, any excuse to leave this watch behind? Yeah, good point. He was probably trying to leave the past in the past. And it was a watch, so that would be in, like the past, like the time. Time to move on. Oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. God. Mind blown. This metaphor is so deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's watches all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, almost as deep as Allie. Allie's um, pride and kind-heartedness because she finds the watch and even though she gets fired, she still turns the watch into the the bitch, the concierge, the head lady, manager, whatever she is. The boss person. She specifically said at the beginning that Allie's like the best maid they have in her really like backhand compliment kind of way. And then she fires her. Well, and you're going to fire two staff members the week before Christmas when you're going to be busy. Yeah. Well, not only that, but she fired two people before them because that's the only reason they were cleaning the VIP floors because she, so she's fired four people in the span of like two days. Oh my God. Holiday right. season. I kind of want to see a movie about her, her downfall, her downward spiral. It's too dark for her Hallmark channel. That's more yeah. of a lifetime channel. Maybe. Oh, absolutely. Like real life. I was attacked by a maid. I fired <laughs> and it made me turn my life around. <laughs> I don't like thinking about this. I want to get back into my Christmas cheery place. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> don't apologize. The world is real and cruel. But not to our maid. She always lands on her feet. Well, yeah, she's so damn optimistic. It's kind of sickening. It's because she's an Evans. Ziz. I don't know. I don't buy that they're like this broke family living in New York. If someone offers you $5,000 uh, and there's no strings attached and you're behind on all your bills and your rent, I feel like you take And you're that. supporting your two younger siblings. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a nice tip from the butler. He's like, here's your tip. We're tipping you well because I'm sure the apartment costs like 10 grand or something. I don't know. I'm not rich. But I do like that they go back to their apartment and they make stew. I love making soups and stews. Me stew. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a real role tonight i can't help it it's that holiday cheer it's all that eggnog all that dairy <laughs> fat what's eggnog made out of eggs and noggins noggins actually it's made out of egg milk yeah so they they milk the eggs oh. and out comes little bits of eggnog mm-hmm. and uh, it actually takes about three dozen eggs for one glass of eggnog so oh my god this sounds monstrous and very (laughs) inhumane they are in shitty conditions they shove them in these little cartons 12 at a time (laughs) oh my god (laughs) they're not allowed out until it's time to milk them for the eggnog (laughs) and i've heard before that there's just like a bird sitting on them like right just they're right under the butthole of the bird yeah, Damn. they have to live under a bird's butthole. These poor eggs. We really need to save them. I feel like I should clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> I am vegetarian. Lori is vegan, so we're not trying to belittle the real suffering that animals. I think I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they're eating stew and drinking eggnog. Just kidding. They're not drinking eggnog. That's an inside they joke. They can't afford it. No. Nope. <laughs> and the butler comes over. And he, it's kind of weird. He did a lot of research about her. He knew her past like three or four jobs. He knew that she dropped out of art school and he wants to give her $5,000 and she rejects it. And I guess like, he had to get her address somewhere. He probably talked to the hotel staff, the probably. like whoever, whoever runs it. You mean that uh, horrible asshole woman that fired her a week before Christmas? Yeah. Isn't it illegal to give out like your employees personal information? Yes. I don't think that lady really cares about anything. Technically, he works for, like, the government, right? He doesn't work for the American government. No, but, like, a government. So I'm sure they... (laughs) Brandon, let me just tell you, you don't need to do whatever the government of, like, (laughs) fucking Uzbekistan tells you to do. Excuse me, sir, it's it's illegal to murder people. Yes, but I work for a government. I work for a government, (laughs) trust me. What I'm saying is I'm sure they have data. No, why would she be in their database? Hmm, this is a real head scratcher. Yeah, and I don't think foreign dignitaries have access to other countries' censorship, census, census data. Yeah, I don't know. Are you windsure about that? (laughs) I'm throwing oh, that one God. back out. We keep on coming back to that joke. I'm when sure I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> oh, it's only funny when I say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You could borrow it. Oh, it's when Shire anyway. No, no, the butler said when sure. The lady oh. said when Shire. And uh, Allie. Allie said when Shire. And I was like, you're such an American. 
Oh, did she say that when he when shired her for the job of nanny? Oh my god. Oh my god, Brandon. I can't stop. <laughs> you need a wing stop. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he hired her to be their what's the word? Governess. 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 Which I didn't know what it was, so Yeah, because you're a stupid American who says Windshire. Wind <laughs> you're wind fired. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so she's like well i got nothing better going on with my life yeah i can pack up for two weeks over christmas and go nanny for some strange girl i mean that seems like a very short amount of time as well just two weeks yeah two weeks so five thousand dollars for two weeks that's a good chunk of money and you get room and board it seems right well i think i think she was also getting on top of the five thousand dollars two weeks worth of pay no, I think he was just, he was saying this is your two weeks pay. So she got paid up front $5,000. She got flown first class. That seems like a meager amount to be a governess for a royal family. Especially for a shitty kid that can't seem to hold down a governess for more than 48 hours. Well, if it's $5,000 for two weeks, that's ten grand a month. That's like $120,000 a year to be a governess. That seems fine. It's nothing to sneeze at, but it's also a full-time job. She has no free time. Well, yeah. Although you are getting provided room and board. I don't know. This gets very complicated. Would you do it for that amount of money? Yes. Uh, I don't like kids, so probably not. Oh, heck, I would. If, if I had to babysit the royal corgis. Oh, shit. That is such a good call. Why aren't there royal cats? Because fuck cats. Fuck you. The royal family. The, <laughs> the royal family knows what's up. Listen, it's just one old bitch that's got corgis. I am so sorry, Your Majesty. I take that back. I will have to edit that out. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> she will send people to kill me. I, I am a citizen of her state. Speaking of Her Majesty, they kept calling the king Your Highness, which uh-huh. is just a faux pas as far as he's Your Majesty. And they've been calling him Your Highness. Your Highness is for the prince and princesses. Did you oh, learn I read a lot of Princess, Princess Diaries. Diaries as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I was right. Well, also, their castle was definitely just like a, a vineyard somewhere. It's three rooms and a courtyard. Yeah. Later in the movie, when they're running late to get her royal picture for Christmas, and she's like, you've got four minutes to change. I'm like, it would take 15 minutes just to get to her room in a real castle. Yeah, these guys are they aren't very rich. So she got kind of, she got suckered in. She probably has more money than they do with that weak ass castle. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's not even any secret passages there. Doubt it. The kitchen was small. Oh, it was so beautiful though. Fuck. Yeah, I would kill for that kitchen. I would take that kitchen and one maid. I would take the the chef, the the lady mm, chef. Yeah. She was so I sweet. would too, but I'm going to have to rename her because Helen is my mom's name, so Gigi is, in fact, not my fat mother. No. Helen is my fat mother. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, so Allie takes the job. She's like, that sounds fine. Her brothers and sisters push her into it. Oh, yeah. Her family's multiplying, by the way, as the movie goes yes. on. <laughs> brothers and sisters. So she shows up to the castle, and she learns she's going to be the governess. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yes. Okay. Governess. To the royal child, Teddy. Her name's Theodore, but she calls her Teddy because it's a cute pet name. It's adorable. And I'm really surprised that nobody, like, chastised her for it, but... Yeah. Yeah, everyone here is all stuck up and proper and follows the rules. And the people that kind of run the castle are a bunch of assholes with sticks up their butts. Oh, yeah, the chancellor is the worst. This is... The story of a girl... And then she got a job as a governess. Yeah. I love how awkward she is. <laughs> she's like to me, she's actually like pretty self-assured and confident. She's just uh awkward in the sense that she doesn't have the right mannerisms for a royal palace. Exactly. And she kind of trips over things and runs into desks and she had zero time to research how to behave in front of a royal family either. Yeah. She was like like he was like get on a plane you're leaving tomorrow yeah i don't think she even had a passport because she said she'd never left brooklyn oh why would she have a passport <gasps> she's illegal <gasps> oh my god do you have to have a passport if someone flies you on like their private plane yes 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 really? if you're 
Yes. If you're leaving the country. Otherwise, people people would be smuggling people over county lines all the time. Oh, yeah. What if it's the king of Winshire? He doesn't care. I don't fucking know. Uh, Why don't we call up the king of Winshire? He's too busy kissing. Yeah. He's kissing. It's unimportant. There's some plot holes in this movie, but they don't matter because they don't affect the storyline at all. It's right. true. Because, you know, uh, they, they cut the scene where she has to go through customs. And that, I'm fine with that. The dialogue was a little slow there. It wasn't great. So they cut it. That's fine. Um, so she me- meets, well, she doesn't meet Princess Theodora. She, like, sees the king arriving and then pre- Princess Theodora throws a snowball at her. And she's like, oh, that was a weak-ass throw, little little princess. And she's also kind of a, a bitch. Everyone's everyone around her is a, a bit of a bitch. I'm a bitch. He's a bitch. She's a bitch. Because we're all bitches. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Princess. No, gosh, I can't get anyone's name right. Allie and Princess Theodora. They're trying to bond, but Theodora hates everybody. Allie's like, "Hey, I could beat you in a snowball fight with my arms tied behind my back." And Allie's little princess Theodore is like prove it and so she kicks a christmas ornament right into the king's doorway and gets in trouble i'm i'm shocked and appalled that a royal household has plastic ornaments and not glass Glass. ones like fine china ornaments i really thought it would have been funnier if the bulb had just shattered when she kicked it (laughs) and that she had horrible lacerations and had to go to the hospital yeah (laughs) i was kind of horrified when Allie took her up on this. Like, she knows she is in a castle with a princess working for a king. And this little girl hands her a, an ornament off the royal <laughs> tree and is like, kick it into that doorway. To be fair, I'm not great with peer pressure either. <laughs> so you would do it, is what you're saying? Probably. What are you supposed to do? Say no. She's the princess. Allie, that night after. Theodora gets tucked into bed. She goes out exploring the grounds and she finds the royal stables, which are like five feet away from the castle because this is the world's tiniest castle. It's a mid castle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she's talking to the horsies, making all sorts of conversation. And the king walks in. He's like, you talking to my horses? And when we, when we say king, we don't mean like the big ugly ones like on Game of Thrones. We mean like cute ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was, he was cute. I'm kind of surprised he's king and not prince just because I feel like king comes with a lot more responsibility than prince does. Well, but he's a king. He is a king. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised that this movie was with a king and not a prince. Or maybe they didn't want to explain that Princess Theodora is a duchess or whatever. Yeah, it's just easier. But wouldn't it have been funny if it was like a nasty old crusty king? (laughs) It would not have been a good Hallmark (laughs) movie then. No, but it no, would have been I great. don't think we would have the same uh, the same chemistry between the actors. Okay, so talking to horses, uh, he talks to the horses too. They're bonding over that. It's you know, it's not giving him free soap, but it's cute. It solidifies the bond a bit more. And this is why we brought Sammy on for Sammy's horse corner. Sammy, tell us about talking to horses. So horses, as we all know from the based on a true story movie, Ready to Run, which is a decom we've done in the past, if you didn't recall, horses will only talk to certain people. And so, as we've learned from this movie, she is a distant descendant of the girl from Ready to Run, who had the ability to talk to horses. No, I'm not joking at all. (laughs) Is she at all related to the girl from Ring of Endless Light who talks to dolphins? Uh, They're distant cousins. Oh, okay. Like three times removed? Yeah, so you've got, you know, the different animal ability. Wait, important question. Where does the guy who talks to dogs tie into this? Was that the Kirk Cameron one? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) You lucky dog. How related is he? He is the grandfather. Oh, he's the grandfather? Yes. So uh, all of it ties back to Kirk Cameron. Yeah. Much like all of life ties back to God. You mean Brink? Oh, yes. You should definitely, next time you're going to say grace before dinner, just remember to thank Brink. For your egg milk. For your egg milk. This horse corner went way (laughs) off the reins. No. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we really got unsaddled on this one. Oh! 
Um, we better glue this back together. Oh my God, Brandon! Oh sorry. <laughs> wow, oh. that was. <laughs> oh jeez, darn it! You really okay. put your hoof in your mouth there, didn't you? I say nay <laughs> to that joke. All right, okay. Um, uh, let's so get he... back to the main story. Here. Oh, oh my God, that was so good! Dang it, that was really good. Um, Ooh. why don't you tail ta- tail us more? <laughs> they have tails okay uh, you've got to give up okay i'm taking the reins over here and we're gonna keep on moving forward okay so he goes riding and uh honestly he kind of sucks because he's talking about how he doesn't really have time to spend with his daughter but he just makes time for himself at night to go for a horse ride like every night like every night bro what about your kid well she's kind of a bee yeah but because he doesn't spend time with her he doesn't have time. For, he keeps he keeps talking this whole movie about how he doesn't have time to parent his daughter. But you're like riding your horses every night. Yeah, and partying it up in New York City. Yeah. So Allie then finds Theodora launching spitballs onto a painting, probably of like her her gammy or something. Um, and Theodora has also taken her daily schedule and hidden it from her and so she tries to spook out or creep out gross out gross out she tries to gross out Allie by taking her into the greenhouse and showing her worms and stuff and Allie's like bitch I'm from New York nothing scares me yeah she's like we got cockroaches that won't die in New York I'm not scared of a worm they kind of have a moment here she's like they start talking about her her mom who died they both start talking about their dead mothers and how they miss them and it kind of comes out of nowhere I can't really remember what started this, but uh, because it was the the mom's greenhouse. Oh yeah, it was her mother's greenhouse, and she's like, my mother loved it. I think about her and whatever. Yeah, so they're bonding. They're starting to get along. Yeah, Did this is ever... like really fast, like breakneck speed bonding too. Yeah, it happens in like one day, which is fine. I think that girl just needed someone to talk to. Probably. She went through so many governesses, though, and not a single one of them was able to... Like, she wasn't that shitty of a child. No, and she said she hated everyone because all of them just wanted to date her father. How hard would it be to go find, like, a 60-year-old nanny who's already married and has no interest in marrying the king? Like, Well, no, I think it was much more like they were all trying to control her instead of understand her. I guess. I just feel like there would be a larger market for like governesses who actually care about their wards but i don't know (laughs) who am i however it happened it got us here in this moment where they're bonding over their dead parents did we ever learn how Allie's parents died no i get the impression that they died together so it must have been tragic i can only assume it was a murder suicide oh No, because Allie's way too well adjusted for that. Yeah. I think it maybe a terrible she, car accident. She's a lunatic in their eyes because she picks up a dinner roll that had fallen on the floor and puts it back on Theo's plate. I mean, that's definitely the wrong call to make. You don't, you shouldn't put that back on the table. Well, where she's from, all food is very precious. I get that, but you're in a royal household. Her job was a maid in a fancy hotel. She knows better. Yeah, she knows how true. to. She knows what's like. I would. I would still eat the roll. I don't judge right, her for not thinking yeah, it's that dirty. Yeah, that carpet is definitely super clean. Yeah, but you're with the royal family. Yeah, she's like, it's a three second roll. They're like, what? She's like, three seconds. It's fine. I yeah. loved it. I honestly would have like po- picked up the roll and pocketed it secretly and then eaten it later. But what was sweet was that the king was like, well, when I was in college, we had the three day rule. Yeah. And everyone laughs. And then he makes her give a toast. I didn't understand that at all. The chancellor does it. Because he makes a toast. And then the chancellor is like, well, why don't you make a toast? And the king's totally like, she can handle this. And he makes her do it. And she gives a good toast. Was he trying to embarrass her? Or what was his intent there, making her do the toast? The chancellor's just a dick. What even is a chancellor? Can we... (laughs) Uh, I have no idea. I think he makes the schedule for the king. If it was not talked about in Downton Abbey, I don't know what it is. Okay, okay. the Googles says it's a senior state or legal official or the head of government in some European countries, such as Germany. Okay. So he's just doing his job. Oh, but so pushy about it. 
Yeah, so this whole meanwhile, Ali and Theodora are bonding. The Chancellor's trying to get the king to marry this other girl from another royal family for... For for appearances and for bond strengthening and... Also, it's a very minor storyline, but apparently the the crown is like losing money mm. or they're not profitable. So somehow marrying this lady is going to bring in money to the country. I mean, that's essentially what royal marriages are about, right? It's strengthening bonds between other families. So for well, Yeah, that's what it used to be it's, about, was yeah. creating yeah. alliances. So it totally makes sense that the chancellor is like, you're thinking with your heart and not with your job essentially and his job is to marry for a specific reason and he's already run off an elope once look this isn't about love i'm not asking you to fall in love with this lady i'm just asking you to marry her well not asking he's telling so he's a jerk stop trying to defend him we hate him (laughs) we hate him he's a butt face he's a stinky poopy i do hate him he puts the butt in butler but he's not a butler but he puts the ass in chancellor (laughs) <laughs> whatever he's a chance a loser yeah uh, no, there's no chance we're gonna like him uh-huh. <laughs> okay let's i'm good at these later that night ali goes down to the kitchens and sees all of the staff having dinner together and she's just like can i join you guys and mrs wick the head of staff or whatever Ugh. she's like uh, the governess doesn't join the staff. And I just want to know, where does the governess have dinner? In her room. That's a, her dinner in her room. It seems like... That's a, a fucking shitty job. rule. That's not... It's not fair. That shouldn't be a rule at all. I don't care whether or not she likes the governess. The governess is part of the staff. She should be allowed to eat dinner with the goddamn staff. They just don't like her. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Well, they <laughs> do like her. Just Mrs. Wick doesn't, because she's a... She's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a pun on Wick, and I couldn't. Miss Wick is... No, I was going to say sick, but that would mean cool. Miss Wick ain't sick. No way. She a dick. Oh, Mm -hmm. perfect. Damn. (laughs) This is the part where I start to really, really like this movie because they finally start to fall in love. The King is all about this new nanny and all about watching his daughter be happy, so he he totally stands this ugly Christmas tree that they put together and he puts his little crown on top of the tree as the ornament. Cause his daughter wanted him to. Also, I think that's a really cute tree topper. Yeah. It's, it's so an cool. adorable tree topper. I kind of want one. Let's all buy crowns. Let's do it. Whoever got me for secret Santa. That's what I want. A crown for Christmas. We are a very successful podcast with many sponsors <laughs> like lush. lush. <laughs> <laughs> lush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The uh, the uh, the king offers her a ride, wink wink, on his horse, winky wink wink. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and it's the first time he's ever taken somebody on one of his horse rides at night. So does that mean he didn't even take his previous wife? That's what I thought. That's but I mean probably not. Maybe she didn't like horses. Maybe she was scared of horses or something. You don't have to share all the same hobbies to have a nice, healthy marriage. So perhaps this was just a hobby that she did not indulge in. Yeah. Or maybe she was murdered by a horse. Oh, no. She took ill. After being stomped on by a horse. Or maybe she was sick and then the horse killed her. (laughs) Maybe she got hay fever. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) You got to quit horsing around. We're trying to finish this episode. (laughs) <laughs> oh god okay the chancellor sees him getting all shummy what's the word shmummy chummy getting all chummy together <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, shummy shmummy i still i don't remember what it is already so he invites chummy. celia to the castle so that they can get married already yeah she's supposed to come christmas eve but the chancellor's like I asked her to come a few days early yeah. and surprises the king. And she's a bad guy in this situation. In this situation? Yeah. She's probably not that bad in person, but circumstances make her pretty bad. She, was, she didn't seem awful up until the very end. Yeah. yeah, when she starts insulting the child, it's very much like the the stepmom from Parent Trap. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We talk about how movies are like The Parent Trap in every episode I've edited. Because, because The Parent Trap... <laughs> it's end-all, be-all, yeah. everything. It is the holy <laughs> word. It is our good book. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, can, I, can I quote an actual mo- line from this actual movie? Yeah. From Parent Trap? <laughs> Absolutely. I saw you and Father writing last night. Next time... Don't hold on to the saddle horn. I like, didn't get that line at all. I think when she said saddle horn, like don't hold on to the saddle horn, she meant like hold on to his waist instead. But they um, were riding separate horses. So she was definitely making a joke about his saddle horn. I would also be very surprised if they were riding a Western saddle. I don't know what that means. So a Western saddle has a, a horn on the front uh, that you could like, tie your reins to and do other stuff because it's like a workman's saddle oh. and an english saddle doesn't have a horn there because it's fancy and for hunting and jumping and stuff neat i feel like an english saddle is very proper and royal well they aren't i mean they think they are but not with that castle well his country is losing money probably because of his mm-hmm. ridiculous partying in new and york his- city and horses are expensive yeah. and- he had a lot uh celia shows up and brings a gift to teddy and it's a tutu and some ballet slippers. And Teddy's like, fuck this. Fuck you. I guess she doesn't like ballet. No. I mean, she's definitely not. But she's not interested in all that stuff that's expected of her. She wants to play in the dirt and dig up worms. Yeah. Not learn to do plies and shit. Yeah. And so they're at the dinner table. And they're talking about their wedding. And she does not want her to get ma- married to Celia. And so she throws a dang fit and runs out. And Allie and the king run after her and she locks them in the greenhouse. And I think she did this to make them flirt and make them, you know, spend some time together. And it works. Oh, did we forget to say that they almost kissed at the end of their horseback ride? Oh, they yeah, were we very did. close to kissing. Oh, yeah. They got like super close to kissing. And, and I think that's what the greenhouse situation was about. Allie was like, I don't like that you almost kissed me when you've got a lady you're about to marry and he was like well i don't want to marry her and she's like well you're gonna anyway and so that's that and then they then he's like i have a spare key and they get out and they almost kiss again but not really he like leans in to grab the key and it's weird yeah it's super awkward the sexual tension was insane it was insane there was actually (laughs) some really good chemistry between those two yeah between those two actors yeah. yeah, I think it's just because she's super adorable and like bubbly. You could see why anyone would fall in love with her. And she just really cuts to the core of people's mm-hmm. character. Maybe she's a sociopath. That's what I was saying. Maybe she, maybe her parents were murder suicided, and she's actually just absolutely insane. Maybe she just murdered them. She, yeah, I think so. A sociopath with a heart of gold. Yeah, and cute eyes. <laughs> I think I've fallen in love with her. Yeah. I think we all have. Yeah, I'm smitten. Hmm. Well, so is Theodore. The- Theodora. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> Teddy, Theodora, the princess, um, continues to be rebellious and kind of like, fuck you, Celia. I don't want to do anything that's going to make your life easy. So they're having a royal uh, decorating ceremony. And, and the dad's like, would you hang up the royal decoration? And Celia hands it to her. And she is like, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm going to hang up this pine cone thing that I made with my with my new mom governess i was gonna say duchess and yeah she does that and everyone loves it (laughs) well the older one is ugly af i mean it was pretty in glass there's no way that that tree was gonna hold it though it was a very unimpressive tree for a royal household ugly it was a shit tree my tree looks better than that it's fake though (laughs) did you know a lot of fake trees have high lead content lead lead oh i love lead (laughs) It's my favorite my favorite writing apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> I go in and I say, where are the trees with the most lead? <laughs> Celia comes up to Allie's room and has a little uh, come to Jesus with her about Theodora and Max and how she's the new mom now and you can take a back seat or something like that. It was uh, kind of intense. I thought it was much less directly threatening than that. It was. It was much less directly threatening. She had some tact. She was very like, I'm glad we had this conversation about how you are the governess. 
an yeah. idly fiance. Well, it was manipulative and bitchy at the same time. It was mm-hmm. like, would you, would you, you know, maybe consider putting in a good word for me? Cause I really want to make my relationship with his daughter work out. But it was, she said it in such a way as like, I'm expecting you to do this and it will be done. Well, to her point, she did just travel to meet her new husband and to get proposed to and to start her new life. So to her, it's probably like, listen, you moved in two days ago. You need to take it easy. I've known him basically my whole life. This is supposed to happen. This is the way things are done. You need to stop. Like, am I wrong? Maybe. At some point, there's a snowball fight with the entire staff and Theodora. It's adorable. Everybody's having a blast. Even Mrs. Witt. That happens already? Yeah, it's right here. I had really hoped that they were going to, um, like, that Mrs. Wick was going to get pulled into it. That really would have made her character a bit nicer. I like her little redeeming moment later on in the movie. But yeah, they all have the snowball fight, and the king is, his character is softening too because of yeah. the governess. And yeah, he and Celia rush out, and Celia's like, what the fuck is going on here? My tea is cold. Someone come warm it up. Allie would never say that. No. No. I love that he runs out, gets to be a part of this big snowball fight, picks up his daughter and says, this is going to be a yearly tradition, this big snowball fight. Because at that moment, you know that Allie is going to marry that motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, I knew it from the beginning of the movie when I know, she but bumped if his curtain to him. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah, as soon as she gave him that free Lush cosmetic soap, I knew oh. it was over. <laughs> God, Lush TM cosmetic soap? I'm using some now. She really... Uh, dropped the love bath bomb on him yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> whatever but anyway they're making cookies in the kitchen uh Allie's famous christmas cookie recipe and there's a cute little moment where she's teaching teddy how to do fractions that was a weird scene that was a weird scene but i think it was just to kind of show that again Allie's great at everything she does and also she would be a good future mother for teddy it's yeah. not just babysitting she's being constructive while she does it i think is yeah. what the point was i'm also yeah. so in the next scene they bring the cookies and celia doesn't want them because she's an asshole and <laughs> then they drop the bomb on her that she's gonna get sent to boarding school and she doesn't like that at all obviously because she's not gonna get to see her dad at all yeah not celia though celia is not going to boarding school <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, Teddy is. Sorry. <laughs> but my question is... is Julia Teddy... probably could use some more finishing. If... But has Teddy been going... Has she been home... Well, castle school this whole time? Or what? It seems like it. That's but I mean, I maybe that's why it. she's so shitty at fractions. Like, she's like, I have literally never learned a thing my entire life. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Because she can't go to public school, right? No. No. I mean, maybe she goes to, like, a school for dignitaries children or something. Yeah. It's possible there's also, like, just a royal tutor. And we've only seen her on her break. Yeah, oh, that poor weird. girl. She's just... All of her interactions with adults... Of course she's going to be a jerk. Yeah. Uh, so Teddy's really upset about boarding school because she already only has one parent. She doesn't see him very often. And then she would see him almost never if she went to boarding school. Uh... Teddy gets ready for the Christmas Eve gala, and apparently she looks just like her mommy. And Max, the king, King King Max, comes in and says, oh my god, you look just like your mom. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, Don't be sorry. Mm-hmm. I like thinking about mom. This was a really sweet moment. It was sad yeah. and sweet and beautiful all at the same time. I loved it. It, it was, was so nice. I loved it too. And so she uses her newfound leverage uh, to manipulate dad and be like, hey, can I invite Allie as a guest of the gala? And he's like, yeah, sure. Go for it. Yeah, I really thought they meant, hey, can she just come down with us instead of staying in her room? But no, they meant she's going to put on a dress and make an appearance, like make her own entrance and get introduced. And so she finds the most extravagant dress Nobody there is wearing anything like this, but she goes and she talks to the chef because she's like, I need a fucking dress. Oh my God, help me. One of the chef is like, no, honey, you're wearing the wrong thing. You're going to the ball. So we're going to put you in a ball gown. Everyone else is in like cocktail, like very fancy cocktail dresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that what you would consider if it's just full length, but body shaping to a cocktail dress? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cocktail is n- less fancy than a ball gown, for sure. And more fancy than a day dress. This is a ball gown that she's wearing. Yes. We learned that the chef, she tells us this big, long backstory about how she fell in love and then lost the love of her life, but then remarried some guy now. So I'm only assuming she's not happy with the guy she's married to now. No, oh, no, her she, husband died. He her, yeah, her husband died. It was no, he this, didn't. Yeah, he's husband? dead. What? He's Which dead. one? So her she, husband. Fell in, she fell in love with a guy. They went to a <laughs> ball together. He joined the military, I think, and went away. So she got with someone else and married him. Yeah. And when the love of her life came back, it was he was she was already married. And then when her husband died, too much time had passed. But oh damn! I thought they were going to tie that bow up a little bit better at the end of the movie. But I was under the impression that Fergus, the butler, was the guy, the one who got away. Yeah, exactly. I don't, That's what I thought. It was implied. Why didn't they just fucking say it? Yeah, just say it. Just be like, and that man's name was Fergus Einstein. All she had to say. I kind of well, like the mystery because these movies are so predictable that in the back of my head, that could be it. And I, th- I think it is. Or maybe Fergus is just her second settling, which is sad Maybe. because honestly i think i think fergus should be people's first reach oh this yeah. is great yeah, he was great i would marry fergus i would marry either fergus or helen or both same i would marry fergus helen ally max any of them and the horse and the- especially <laughs> Wait, <no. laughs> that because that's the only other character that really had enough screen time to warrant that do you know who I wouldn't marry? Celia. Celia. Boo. Neither would Max. No, he wouldn't. So they're at the ball, and Allie makes her grand entrance, and she looks beautiful in her red ball gown. Max asks, asks? That's a difficult word to Ax. say. Max he, asks. Max asks her to dance, and she she cuts a she cuts a pretty good rug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for for being poor and living in New York City, she sure can waltz. No kidding. I was like, if somebody ever fucking asked me to do a waltz, I would not accept. I'd be like, I can't. No, I'd, I'd say not in front of all these people. You want to like go practice in the back room for a second? Just <laughs> learn a box <laughs> step. You'll be fine. No, I can polka, and that's about it. What does polka <laughs> involve? It's like. I mean, oh, they, it also very much fits the character that I've, <laughs> I've built up in my mind of you. <laughs> they basically explain <laughs> it as like the the poor man's waltz. Okay. It's it's like a three-step thing. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, because you can't afford the fourth step. No. <laughs> that one's extra. So you're doing the triangle step instead of the box step? Basically, yeah. Woo. Can't make it to four. Too expensive. Too expensive. Um... <laughs> They find out the ring is missing because he's supposed to propose to Celia. Okay, so they there was never like he never said I am going to marry this woman. He was just like let's hang out and see where things go. Well, I think it was like I, previously established, and he knows that it's expected I guess so. of him. I guess so, but I still thought it was super presumptive of her to be like, "Well, let me see the ring. Can I please see the ring?" Calm down. He hasn't even proposed yet. Yeah, give it a second. She did make like a good, very quick argument there. She's like, we we will have a beautiful marriage if you just give us a chance. You know, she was like, I love you right now. And I know that you'll love me eventually. And that's good enough for me, which is sad and sweet at the same time. But also there's like that undercurrent of selfishness. I do love that he said, you deserve better than waiting for me to fall in love with you. That was pretty cool. I know that's at the very end. Uh-huh. But that was a great line. Yeah. That was a good line. And it was, it didn't villainize her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she she has her moments of villainry. Villainy. Villainry. <laughs> no, there's no R. <laughs> <laughs> she has her moments of villainry. And, uh... <laughs> villainry. I'm a villain. <laughs> I'm a villain. I'm a villain. <laughs> Let me take your children away. I'm Sherry. I'm a Viren. <laughs> I'm a I'm a ch- I'm a Viren with children. <laughs> okay, we need to stop this. 
I'm not fearing these children. I'm a real rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. It's hot in here. Oh, God. Um, um, the ring goes missing. And she, of course, blames Allie. And I really thought that it was going to be her setting up Allie to get rid of her. Like, I thought she had stolen the ring and then planted it in Allie's room. Yeah, for sure. That would have sucked. <laughs> sure would have, Brandon. <laughs> that really would have ruined this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that that's not how she villainizes herself. But she does in, like, two seconds later when she says to Max that, She's going to send his daughter to boarding school and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I can't get wait, wait to get rid of your child. And it's like, oh, wait, you are a villain. I think it's so hard. It's so hard to have these other woman storylines in these movies because you can't make them too sympathetic or you feel bad for them. So you kind of have to villainize them so that you're rooting for the main character. Yeah, that's a really good point. Because there were... I never really felt sorry for her until the line when he said, it's not fair to you to wait for me. Then I felt bad because I was like, oh man, she has been waiting like 20 years or whatever yeah, to marry him. And now she can't. Allie was like, I'm still going to tell them that I took it so that you don't get into trouble. But then Max does the sweet thing where he's like, no, I found it on the dressing table where I left it. So nobody gets in trouble. Allie still decides that it'd be best for her to leave anyways, because she's she's complicating things with her beauty, both inner and outer. So she starts to leave, yep. but then the king is like, no. Well, no, she's she's already left no, she, the castle. And well, she's, <laughs> yeah, she left the castle, but she didn't go she's far. She's at City Hall for some she, Yeah, I was wondering that too. For a second, I thought she went all the way back to Brooklyn and she was at City Hall there. If she had done that, this would have been exactly the parent trap then. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he comes after her like knight in shining armor, but without the armor. Knight on shining Clydesdale. And he's not a knight, he's a king. King in shining leather. Leather, King Leather Daddy. <laughs> he is, it's not a decom, but he is one of the best daddies that we've had. Oh, no, he absolutely sucks in the beginning. In the beginning, yeah, but he learned. Yeah. It's so much better than any of the other decom daddies who are just like, I'm right and you're wrong. No, this movie ends really suddenly. He finds her and yeah. they kiss. Oh, wait, at the, one of my favorite parts is before that she uh, had given Christmas presents to everyone. And somehow she had the time oh, to yeah. paint a portrait of everyone that works in the house. And in the week there. that she's been there. But um, Mrs. Wick's portrait, like, really, it, it really shows her as a, a very beautiful person. So it's, I think it's supposed to be people's inside personalities. And it really softens her. And she's very touched. She, Mrs. Wick's had this faint smile in her portrait. It was... Well, and she was just very tall and high and like with she held herself very well she looked good she it, did it was adorable she was well lit <laughs> and then we got to see that she had a bit of a bit of a heart yeah um so max gets her from city hall like not even a train station or anything why wouldn't you like there's no stakes how is she gonna is she what is she gonna take a train to brooklyn i mean that'd be like johnny <laughs> taking that car to Hawaii. no but there's no it's not there's no stakes at all if she's just hanging around city hall and there's no chance of her leaving with that before him getting to her also what is she gonna do at city hall sleep on the stairs yeah i don't know that didn't make any sense oh, well. she he brings her back and they make out <laughs> while also hugging teddy yeah, it was a the, little awkward. And then the movie just ends, and I was very mm-hmm. shocked. So I fast-forwarded through the the credits to see if maybe there's a scene after the credits or something to show her going back home, but no. No, so we don't find out, like, does he does he import the brother and the sister to come live with them? Do they manage to pay <laughs> off all their utilities and their rent? Yeah, what do they what do they do with the apartment? Or do they have to le- like sublet the apartment until their lease is up, or what? Like, how does the sister get the line, the the role in the chorus line? Yeah, or... does she? <laughs> Who knows? Does the brother get an A on the economics test? Who knows? So many loose ends that just did not get tied up. I could have done, I could have done with like like a check in 
with the siblings. Yeah, like a like a one year later. Well, we're just gonna have to wait until Crown for Christmas. I mean, a Crown <laughs> for Easter. Anyway, so that's that's Crown for Christmas. Yeah. What did you guys think, Brandon? What would you rate it? So I loved this movie. I love Hallmark movies because they're a different type of Christmas movie. It's not about Santa. It's not about reindeer. It's not about magic. It's just about Christmas time. And I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10. Uh I don't know if we rate these or not. Yeah, we're going to. We're going (laughs) to. I loved... This really got me in the Christmas spirit. I am going to watch more Hallmark Christmas movies after this. Because I really liked watching it. Get a cup of hot cocoa and like a sweater and a blanket and a dog. And you got it. I agree. Christmas rom-coms are one of my favorite things, especially the really shitty ones. This one wasn't shitty though. And I still really loved it. It was, I would give it a seven out of 10. It was feel good. I wanted to drink some hot cocoa and marry a king. And it's exactly what I got out of this movie. I would rate it uh, a seven out of 10. I would give it a higher rating, but I feel like, When I watch a Christmas movie, I expect it to be like Christmas, like in your face. Whereas that was just kind of like a a secondhand thing. Like it just happened to be taking place during Christmas, I guess. So how how do you feel about Die Hard? I like Die Hard though. (laughs) Die Hard's an excellent Christmas movie. Yeah, so this is this is good. It was it was predictable but enjoyable, and it was it it was feel good, which I think I'm like a very determined Scrooge kind of sometimes about it. Like I'm not, I'm an optimist, I would say, but I think around Christmas, I'm just like, Oh, it's too early. Cause things start too early. So then I unintentionally intentionally yeah. become Scroogey about things, but this made me feel very Christmassy. That's how I feel all the time. And I will say after I watched this movie, I went out and bought a bunch of Christmas presents for people. Did you? Oh, wow. So, yeah, I did. Wow, I got nice. Some I uh, immediately put on, Carly Rae Jepsen's uh, Christmas song. See, it does something to you. This movie does something to you. So I don't think we need lessons learned because we got all those good feelings out of it. Unless you want to. What'd you learn? (laughs) Uh, To not be a hypocrite because the dad was a hypocrite. He was like, I don't want to be like my dad, but he didn't spend time with his daughter. He only did royal stuff while also still kind of eschewing like the traditional roles that he was supposed to be doing. So he was a hypocrite. Yeah, I learned from Allie and her family to just work hard for what you need. Keep going. Take the opportunities that come to you and just enjoy the people that are yeah. around you while you're doing it. That's why you're doing it. I learned to always ram into people on the VIP floor of hotel rooms because you might end up marrying a king. Nice. I was thinking maybe just the free Always soap. carry that's way tiny chocolates and free soaps to give out. To and people. lush soaps. Lush TM soaps. Yep, absolutely. You never settle for <laughs> anything less than lush. We are also unfortunately not sponsored by lush. Oh, don't sue us, lush. Maybe unfortunately. We Sammy, you gotta do a crown joke. I'm, th- I'm thinking of one. Give me a second. Uh, oh, God. Put on your thinking crown. Come up with one. This, uh, <laughs> that one wasn't good. This this baby of a podcast is crowning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to be in on the ground floor of that, you can go to uh, com. Find us on social media. Email us at together at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at together and pod in this together on and Instagram. Download us and listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. iTunes, Google Play. We're now on Spotify. Woo! Yay! Nice. If you like us, prove it. Like us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bells. I absolutely do. such a good answer.